Welcome back, I'm Daniel. This is the libcurl video tutorial episode verbose and I'm here to just show you a little quickie on how to uh, add verbosity uh, and get some more explanations when things don't go exactly the way you planned. So I have uh, my um, editor window, my terminal window here and a uh, lovely forest in the background. So here's uh, my example program that I pretty much wrote up in the simplest episode. It's a very simple one, global init, creates a libcurl handle, sets up a transfer, makes the transfer, show if there's a problem, then explains it and cleans up the handle again and then the go makes the global cleanup and returns. Easy peasy. So we build that and we run it. Bam. Oops. Can't resolve host mine. Right? Here's the problem. Why does your libcurl program fail? So well, of course, if you look at the code here, you can see that I've actually purposely misspelled the host name. But um, we can do like this. Here's what I always encourage everyone to do as a first step to diagnose why your libcurl program doesn't actually perform the way you think it should. So you set the curl up the verbose option to one. I used a capital L here to make sure that it's a long argument because it's supposed to be a long value here not an int, a long. So rebuild that again and I run it again and bam, I get some more additional info as you can see here with the asterisks in the beginning of the line and then the regular. So that is cool. It explains slightly more and if you would do something more, like a more crazy mistake, um, like if we switch off there again and I, uh, for example, let me, let me try this. I don't have a HTTPS server on my local host. So if, if I would do this, I rebuild and I run it and it says, eh, my God, what kind of error is that? And then I can enable the verbose level and I will get some more information that it actually says that it tries to connect to that IP address, that port and some other information. It succeeds to connect to it. See, it actually succeeds to connect because I have another server there, not an HTTPS server. And this talks about ALPN, blah, 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 and then it fails. So additional info from, from the process. And actually, even if you go back to, we make a, a domain that actually works and do that, we can see that, boom, even in the successful case, we scroll back here up a little bit, we can see that we get a lot of useful information. Even, even if it works, this helps I mean, just checking out what it does, what it, how, how it behaves, and what it does. So we can see IP address, port number, uh, that is succeeds a lot of info about the TLS connection, and then about the certificate. And in this case, my curl libcurl here is built to use OpenSSL, so this output differs slightly if you have a, a different TLS library. So blah blah blah, and, and then you also get the entire HTTP request, one, which in this case you can see is HTTP two, and then you can see uh, the response headers and everything that comes back from the server. So you get a lot of extra details. And then um, the f finally the contents uh, arrive here. So a lot of extra info. Maybe you don't want that um, in your typical day to day, but it's really useful. And uh, just showing that's the verbose. You should always keep the verbose option in mind. but even for this case, when if we go back to my original problem here, right, this gets a couldn't resolve host name. I have another little hint for you, and I will show you the. I have my mon page for this installed here in my Linux distro. Curl opt error buffer is the option I want to talk about. So I'll show you how that works. So if I provide a, an error buffer. error and error has to be a buffer of a certain size it needs to be at least curl error size bytes big so like that i have a local buffer called error i i tell curl about it with the curl error buffer option and then when something fails like this I get some extra data or um, error message in that. So like in this case, then let me add the error 
I get from libcurrent, a specific error then, because previously we used this str error to just convert the numerical error code to a string. Now we can get a unique error message from this particular error that libcurl tells us. So in this case then, you we could basically remove this other uh, str error case because the str error now doesn't really add much. Because so now we can perhaps do it like this. We only use the error buffer message when it goes wrong and it says boom, fail, could not resolve host and then it actually also spells out the host name that was wrong because it comes from there, right? So that's a, a very useful thing to get some more data or, or more information out of a typical um, mistake or bug or error, it's, it's especially if you're getting like the URL from a user or from a configuration somewhere, yeah, it is really helpful to be able to provide a more detailed error back to whoever reads the errors. Um, I also, so that's th those are two really good ways to, to get more info from, from your pro problems and you can of course combine them, you can set the verbose at the same time. But then you get it like this, right? So you get to see the verbose first and then you see them. The verbose output is sent to standard R by default. So if you don't like that, you also need to handle that. <laughs> I'll show you that in another episode, but you can of course do that. There are ways you can redirect standard R to another file, or you can take care of all the verbose um, information with a separate callback. But um, there's going to be a separate episode about th that uh, callback. So you can look for that. Mm, okay, so we have verbose. I better shut off the verbose again. And we have ever buffer. And I wanted to show you an, uh, a last one that is useful at times. It's called curl opt header. And that's also a Boolean. So you set it, I enable it. And if I enable it, it basically asks curl to please include the response headers in the data output stream. So, uh, or well, right, then I need to make it actually work. That's if you wanna inspect, if you wanna uh, get your the response headers into your data stream that return. So we can see it like this. Yeah, we got the response headers first and then the response because we asked to get the headers like that, uh, which uh, also is good while debugging, right, or, or looking for problems. What did the server actually tell us? And if you're if you're into HTTP and you, you know your stuff, you can read these uh, headers and understand what's going on. Like the date could be important, content type, e tag, pretty much all of them, content length also. So that's uh, one way to increase the verbosity of your transfer transfers to diagnose what's going on and then let's switch that off again and we're back to everything works right curl opt verbose curl opt error buffer and curl opt header useful little tools and and the switches to switch on and off to uh, help you diagnose your your issues or transfer mm, sort of side effects or or not and it also um, shows you like HTTP version and some of the negotiations, those negotiations that are going on when you connect on and do requests. Awesome. On to the next episode, right? See you.